let's talk about what OSINT is or OSINT. Uh, it stands for Open Source Intelligence, right? If you're from the military, which understand there's a few people here with the military background, you probably understand that intelligence is information gathering, right? Collecting and analyzing. In this case, we talk about open source, publicly available information for research or other purposes. All right, great. So how is it used, right? If you think of fingerprints, much like in the concept of OS intelligence, it's really about gathering digital footprints or digital fingerprints similar to a case as if you were a detective or if you were an investigative type individual. In this case, it will help you perform security assessments such as pen testing, um, you know, understand uh, what type of how network information exists and how it's configured, maybe perform, like I said, social engineering, uh, understand threat intelligence and the like. So how is it used, right? We talked a little bit about pen testing. In the case of pen testing, we sort of refer to ethical hacking. That's sort of the reference in regards to pen testing, right? Where security professionals could use open source intelligence to find weaknesses or holes in the networks they're trying to test, right? From an ethical point of view, so they can help that organization remediate those holes or those weaknesses before they could become exploited or used by someone in a malicious manner. And that could be a threat actor, right? So the goal here is to use open source intelligence in a good way to help perform hacking, ethical hacking that helps companies protect themselves. We could also use it to identify external threats. And what are the external threats? Well, if you join a boot camp, you'll learn, boot camp, you'll learn a lot about external threats and they can come from various different uh, points and um, other areas. But typically what you wanna do in an external threat is be able to intercept that threat after and prevent them from making an attack on your network or uh, prevent them or those attackers from gaining access to your systems and possibly stealing or using sensitive information or even taking down your system. So nice to meet you all. It's a pleasure to have you all here. Um, so this is the part that I love. This is the part that uh, makes cybersecurity fun. So yeah, so real quick, um, we're gonna be going through a Kahoot based on what David spoke about um, OSINT. Now, if you guys don't know what a Kahoot is, it's just a fun, uh, let's say, game where there's some questions, you know, about a certain topic and you all answer at the same time, you know, at the same moment. So to, to, to get straight into it, what I want you guys is to go to the Kahoot.it website, if you want to do it on your browser. And if not, just download the Kahoot app real quick. So everybody that wants to join, you can just put this code right here. You're gonna put it in chat and put some some unique names. You're gonna see that once, uh, once you put the code, it will ask for a nickname, just like that. Put it up there and then just <laughs> Enter there. Valdo, D, that student. I like that. <laughs> Let's get started. Kahoot. Awesome. Well, three, two, and one. First question. Which of these is used to identify external threats performing ethical hacking and penetration testing using OSINT? All right. Let's see, let's see how you guys pay attention to this one. Right, boom. Congratulations, most of you got it right there. Yeah, I can assimilate that part process and tools, but remember that OSINT consists of those two things, techniques and tools. Maybe for example, it take me maybe social engineering and then you can use uh, a tool to, to do that. But 
um, great stuff right there also for here for technique and process. Yeah, but how you do the process with the tools. So that's why there you have technique and tools. If you could go to this website, cyberseek.org, I think that'll provide you a plethora of opportunities that you can consider might be your path, right? So a typical path someone might take is become a SOC analyst, meaning you're working in an, in an environment where you're analyzing logs, you're analyzing events, and you're helping organizations to understand the activities that are going on and determine if those activities are good or bad, right? And when they're bad, you would want to raise it to the attention of your customer so that, or the client, so that they could either do something about it or you raise it to someone else in your organization, which might be level two, and they could help to react to that situation, right? So that's one opportunity, but there's a host, excuse me, there's a host of additional career paths that you can take. And what's nice about this tool, CyberSeek, it's an uh, independent organization. You can look up the vast amount of opportunities that are out there for students, right? Or individuals trying to get into cybersecurity. So we get three certifications from this uh, curriculum. Uh, I believe it's CompTIA Plus, uh, CompTIA Cloud Plus, and Ethical Hack, correct? Well, you, that's your, that's your, that's what your cohort is doing. Um, future cohorts, we're going to switch out CEH for Tent Pen Test Plus, but yes, that's correct. So for the pen testing, uh, if I just wanted to take the act course through CyberWare, is that possible? No, it's changing. Um, it, oh. It's changing. CEH and Test Plus, it's the same skill set, just different certification exams offered by competing uh, entities. The other classes that we're taking that are not certifications, like you know, security automation, incident response, I believe those are also things that you want to add to your resume, I would imagine. A absolutely. One of the things that we're going to do um, is, and, and we should start doing it as soon as you're ready, um, Francisco, is that um, we will take your Word resume, your Word version of your current resume, and add skills and cybersecurity skills, not that you've been paid to, 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 to demonstrate or to, to perform, but that you've done in this program. And there's no difference. The, the skills you develop are the skills you develop. If you can do X, you can do X. It doesn't matter whether you develop that skill in a lab environment, in a capstone project environment, or if you're getting paid by some company who, who was employing you. The skill is still the skill. And we will, and, and, and Claire is one of the people who, who, who drives our, our resume creation. Um, we are going to help you package a resume that you can demonstrate the skill sets and the value proposition that you bring to an employer on day one.